moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till Jesus calls. So the holidays that were established by Rome, Christmas, Easter, etc. That's not that's not biblical. So you know that Rome is still ruling today. So you got those that are right under the Roman Catholic Church, but you got bill over billion people in Christianity, billions in Christianity, and the Christianity that they have is based on Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is based on paganism. Okay? And if you can't see that, you blind. It's based on paganism. So they still were ruling. And in these last days, they are, Rome is going to come into power. See, Rome really never left power. Even though you had the United States, UK, Great Britain, Rome, you look at the people. People is more than one way to control people. And one way is through religion. And the Roman Catholic Church controls multitudes through their religion. Directly, if you're, if you're a Catholic, and indirectly through their doctrine that has permeated through your religion. That's why it's called, she is the mother of harlots. Who are these? She is the main harlot or whore. And then you got these other little harlots. Protestants, Lutherans, Episcopalians, Baptists, etc., etc., etc. And now this one is going to come back. It's that beast that was and is and is come. That beast is gonna come back, Rome, and it is coming back now, and it's gonna be back on top through the European Union, okay? And the spiritual head of that is gonna be through the Pope. Not saying it's Benedict, but it's gonna be one whoever's in that, the one whoever's in that office at that time, okay? Because the European Union is, is simply the reunification of the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire was simply uh, all of Europe. Under one banner, the Roman Empire. And that's what's going to take, it's taking place now. Okay? So, it says, in verse 8, it says, I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. See, this is talking about the Pope. Because he's a king. He has a sovereign nation in Vatican City. He's a king and he speaks. He is high aloft. He don't say, I'm just a king. He says, I'm the vicar of Christ, the replacement for the Son of God. Alright? So he's speaking, he's speaking great things. Okay? This is what he's saying. You look at the titles, titles that he has, Pontifex Maximus, which is a pagan title. Alright? The vicar of Christ. And it, it's so many. But they are, you know, he, they're blasphemous. But this is when the, the Lord is going to establish his kingdom after that's over. Okay? Because this Pope is going to reign during the Great Tribulation and the European Union is just simply, again, the reunification of that fourth beast. Verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did come, did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Okay, then it says a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Why? Because when he comes, he's going to establish hell, the lake of fire. That's when that's established, at his second coming. It's not now. People are not in hell now. The lake of fire is hell fire. Hell is just a state of condition. And at this time, the first two that go in are the beast, not the beast, the four beasts. I'm talking about the nations, but the beast in Revelation was a military type man and a false prophet who was the Pope. Alright, they're going to be the first ones even going to beat Satan into the lake of fire. And they're going to be there a thousand years while the Lord is reigning, a thousand years. And then, after that, then, then uh, Satan and his angels are going to be in the lake of fire. Okay, so it says in verse 11, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words with the horn spake, I beheld even to the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. See, that's just what I told you. You can read that in Revelation 19 and 20 and, and I believe 20 and 10. Uh, and then we're going to go down a little bit because he saw the Son of Man. He said, I saw in the night visions and, one, and behold, one like the Son of Man, talking about Jesus, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, the Father. And they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion. Because we read in Psalms 110 division, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy foes thy footstool. This is at that time. And he's going to give him a kingdom. It says, and it was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom 
that which shall not be destroyed. We read that in Luke 1. His kingdom is going to be forever and ever. He's going to sit on the throne of his father David. One more place, because this is, again, this is taking place after the Great Tribulation. This is taking place after he comes back in wrath to wage war. Then, at this time, it says in Revelation 11 and 15, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Okay, that's what he's going to do. After he wages war on this man, he's going to establish his kingdom on the earth. Let's go to uh, Zechariah, four, back to Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Because again, this is all over the Bible. It's amazing that we don't know what's going on. We must have some false prophets out here. Zechariah 14 and 9, it says, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, not in heaven, king over all the earth. Okay? And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Now let's go down to uh, verse 16 because these feast days that, that people despise and, and claim have been nailed to the cross and refuse to be obedient to, people are going to suffer consequences when he establishes his kingdom because it's going to be uh, based on the law of God. See, people... Ignore the law of God and, and make fun of it. I've even heard people say the, the, this book is a book of Jewish fables. It's not real. Come on, you're going you gonna, to uh, keep that dietary law. What's wrong with uh, eating uh, shrimp and pork, etc.? They mock at that type of thing. Okay? But that you need to understand that at this time, the Lord is going to establish his kingdom and his law is going to be obeyed. You're going to adhere to it or else. Zechariah 14, chapter 16, it reads, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all nations, all the nations which came against Jerusalem, so after he's done a multitude of killing, all those that are left, it says, They shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Alright? So, even though we were supposed to keep that from generation to generation, you're supposed to keep that through all generations. Okay? People have done away with it. But it said, hey, look, after man has been brought into subjection, he said, people are going to go up and, and, keep, and worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and keep the feast of tabernacles. Not Christmas, not Easter, okay? Not New Year's, not Halloween, the feast of tabernacles. All right, in verse 17 it says, And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Okay? So he said, he's like, you won't rain. And if it doesn't rain, your crops don't grow. And if your crops don't grow, because it said that you've taken your spears and pruning hooks and turned that, or your spears turned that into pruning hooks and, and other uh, uh, instruments of farming at this time, because you don't want to learn, man doesn't want to learn war anymore. He said, so why are you farming? If you don't come up to keep the feast of tabernacles, I will not allow it to rain. You will have a drought and you will die. That's a horrible death. That's one of the worst ways to die, starvation. Alright? It says, And it shall be, that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem and worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, they have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not to up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Okay? See, that's your punishment. That's your punishment. The Lord is going to be exalted at this time. This is the 24th division of Psalms. It says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. This is what the Lord Jesus actually created the world. This is what he has done. Verse 3 reads, Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Now, this is what we need to understand. Who is going to be a part of this? Who is going to be a part of this? Okay? He says, Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. 